Hello everyone, welcome back. Paul Charney here with the one and only Caitlin, well, Caitlin Kadu. Kad Kadju. You got it. Kadju. It's evolving yes. over these three so, days. <laughs> Although this is not me. I know. <laughs> Super close though. Uh, there we go, okay. there we go, that's you. I that's wish. more like it. I mean, I wish Claude's I wish I had- crushing it today, I wish so. I had Claude's hair, his gorgeous hair. He let that, he let it down. Oh, it's just, it's glorious. You know, we all, we all have our thing. Yeah into it and we're happy to have you here ashi and tamoy just say something in chat we want to oh what's up ej uh, thank you for watching oh awesome yeah ej do you know ej i do okay. he does really cool cinema 4d yeah um, tutorials that's... really awesome stuff a lot of like 2d stuff too so you know if you're a 2d motion designer um mm -hmm. but you want to get into that 3d world isn't it you look up ej i design oh. on youtube yeah Oh yeah, perfect. slash google.com anywhere. Exactly. Um, and you're gonna find if, some really cool stuff. I don't know if he's been a guest with us. Maybe, maybe not, I'm not sure. But either way, JC, thanks for joining us as well. Uh, good to have such like talented people dropping in and hanging yeah, out. It makes it awesome. kind of fun. So. They're answering all the questions that I can't. <laughs> I'm just tapping into my large network. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and getting, exactly. And getting oh, saved Evan? on occasion. Thanks for being here, Evan, as well. I uh, appreciate you all chiming in. Uh, we have, uh, yeah, a See fun Zach. What's day up? three. And you know uh, Zach. I do. Well, Bare just so barely. popular. <laughs> You're so popular. I'm just really online. <laughs> a lot. For better or for worse. <laughs> well, we're certainly happy to have you. It is day three, uh, so the you can always go to the replay tabs. You can see the first two days and uh, uh, you can see all the replays. You can just see. You can watch Gus's and Claude's from earlier today and uh, Wednesday and Tuesday. Uh, but essentially, we're going to dive into motion design. So a lot of After Effects, a lot of fun. I swear, it I is hope so, so fun. Like even if you're not, we want we want this to be a time where people like kind of dive in and just like animate something. Yeah. And that's what I think has been your your work the past couple of days have been has been really like tangible, like anybody. Oh, you, I love you make that. me feel very empowered. Like, yes. Oh, I understand what you said. I could do that. Yes, so. baby. That's what I want. Um, uh, you know, you can get super complicated in After Effects, but you don't have to. You can do a lot of cool stuff. Um, just getting the basics down. And that's what I want to open up the world of this to you because it is super fun to take a graphic, even one that you made. Yeah. Um, and make it move. That is actually, it's super exciting. And it doesn't, it never gets less exciting. It is always super fun to see something totally static mm -hmm. become a lie. And uh, I'm into it. Like like magic, such as this, like which this. you have become very familiar <laughs> with over the past couple days. Um, there's a couple things that we can still tackle in this, but I also, this morning, worked up some new stuff mm -hmm. to show you. Um, should we just like hop over into that and take a look at it? Yeah, I say we go for it. Uh, again, uh, we have these recordings from the past two days. You can see how this is built. So we kind of don't need to dive into that too much. Um, but I like the whole idea of what you just mentioned, like take a, take a logo, take a graphic, and just bring it to life, make it an animated GIF, post or make it a video and post to Instagram yeah. or something and guarantee you that data is awesome. Yeah. There's like, we know video captures people's attention more than something static. And there's a lot so. out there. Yeah, EJ, like, um, EJ's logo is an eye. Um, and again, I mentioned this yesterday. Mm. I do a lot of eye stuff. You will see it in a lot of my videos. I don't, you know, there's just something, it's fun. It's just super fun. Um, so I hope you had fun. Uh, I went over that, how I animated this boy yesterday. Oh, it's um, a boy. I guess in this, <laughs> this is, it's David Bowie. It is David Bo Bowie. Eyes. David Bowie. Eye, one eye. <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess we can flip over. Um, I kind of, I did something new for this third day. Um, Cause I wanted to show you guys some expression stuff too. Uh, it's something we hadn't touched on very much. Also what I was thinking today is, um, we talked about this on Tuesday. The, Tuesday was David Bowie's birthday. Mm -hmm. Today, uh, sadly, was the day that David Bowie passed away. And mm -hmm. so I kind of wanted to do something, tapping into that energy, celebrating mm -hmm. his awesomeness and how cool it was that we got to work on something like this um, over this week. Like what a what a crazy, you know, this is like, I guess, truly the week of Bowie. <laughs> so yeah. um, 
Yeah, I wanted to play around with some different stuff. I like um, it. I like what you're doing here. And again, you could just tell you you have a like really good design eye. You know, thank just you. seeing and and seeing this text fade in. I'm looking at all these different things that I totally want to like know how you did. Oh, awesome! The I way love the it. text fades in, these yeah. sparkles. Like, is that? I don't know. And again, I mean, it's all pretty simple stuff, uh, which is like kind of exciting for us to dive into because again, I, we started on some expression stuff. I think we showed you wiggle yesterday, mm -hmm. just at the very tail end, and I think that was all that we really got to. Um, but I played around with a couple different ones for this thing, uh, and they're all pretty, it's hopefully a pretty easy intro into the world of expressions. Um, so maybe we start there? Yeah, I'm into it. Expressions? Uh, what I did, that is how I made these stars in the background. I used a couple different things. And um, so these are in their own comp too, so we can get in here. And here's just like the stars by themselves doing their star thing, much like David Bowie. They're all just kind of, okay, got, uh, those are pre-comps. Yes. So each one of these stars is just, I only made one comp for that and I duplicated it here throughout. Okay. You can see um, all of these are the same comp, just duplicated. Do you mind? Uh... Opening that up? Yeah. Let's do it. So this is the star, just, by itself. And there's a couple different things going on here. Uh, I have a wiggle Ooh. on the scale to make it kind of twinkle like that. Oh, it's, um, it's, it's a path animation, which is another thing I showed the first day um, and maybe a little bit on the second day. Um, so it starts out as this kind of diamond shape and then oh. it transforms, it blossoms into a star. And let's, um, so uh, this is another keyboard shortcut thing. Ella, EJ, you're dropping some really good stuff in the chat. This is really working. What is, this is a good day. <laughs> I think we're all feeling very strong today, very Bowie empowered. That's right. Um, so if you're in a comp and you know there, there are expressions that you've put on some layers, if you hit EE on the keyboard, it will open up things that, like the, the um, parameters that you put an expression on. So I only have a scale expression on this layer, but you know, if I'd put a wiggle on the position or something, that would also open up uh, and just for those who maybe didn't tune in yesterday or like need a refresher on expressions. Um, yeah, can you, at least maybe you wanna just copy that line of code and then just oh, like copy, copy it. it and then just delete it. Like start from like, not necessarily scratch, but yeah. if, as if that wasn't there. I can just, I can start this whole thing from scratch actually. Okay, that And I think that might be good because there's, that, a, there's again a few different things going on in here. So maybe we yeah. can open up like a new comp. Perfect, start two. And um, just have it 200 by 200. I just want it to be kind of small so it's not um, super in the way. And I I'll open up Illustrator. Um, I'm using the same star asset that I, uh, <laughs> there are some very distracting Bowie puns in the chat and they're all <laughs> excellent. Um, but I work best <laughs> when I'm under pressure. Dun, 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 dun. Uh. Good Is that good? You, Repeating yeah. it and stealing? That's, yeah, that was not an original for me. That was out of EJ's <laughs> brain. It was very good. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna crack this open. As we've seen, this is the Illustrator file where all of my assets are chilling. And just a quick, you know, housekeeping things. Basically, we're gonna do a random giveaway in about uh, 20, 20 minutes, minutes and yeah. then today's portfolio reviews. So you will be able to see that, Ooh, of course, cool. in the portfolio review tab. Submit your portfolio, we'll, we'll review a couple of them in an hour and 20 minutes. So I'm grabbing this star. It is in my, all of the cool assets that we have here and I'm gonna put it into its own comp. That's um, a lot of points for. It is and I oh, have a tool so many? to clean it up. Oh, I'll do you one better. What did you what do? Did, it. Did you do it? Okay. I don't know what you're referring to, but the star tool in here. Yeah, I um, do want to show this thing though because okay, um, we both want to show a couple it things. It can be. We're I'll, getting into it. Now. I'll do a. <laughs> can you like click? And I got it. I got it. Click and drag, and go. then hold down the hold shift, down the command and shift. Yeah. And this is easier. There it is and it's fresh and clean. You see how this this original one has a lot of extra points, um, which sometimes can just happen depending on how you make an asset or like, you know, where it came from. 
if you draw the star and hold down the option key, it'll give you a different yeah. it'll give you a different star. So if you go here, right? I think it's yeah, if you don't hold down oh, option, it yeah, and if you hold down okay. option when you're dragging it, it'll flatten. And then do up and down arrows. Up and down arrows, you can get real buck wild. You can go from star to like full sun, which I yeah. know those are the same, but you know, just iconographically. Very cool though. Lots of different options here. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> if I just start laughing in the middle of this, it's because I read a funny thing in the chat. And sometimes <laughs> like several funny things at the same stop, time. Stop, stop making Caitlin laugh. It's pretty no, good. I'm enjoying Please it. Please do. Um, but. You're such rebel rebels. I just want to shout out this tool really quickly. I know I'm like all about repping those third party things, but I have run into this a lot where you want to bring stuff into After Effects as cleanly as possible because it can help you animate it. And there is a um, tool that I have from Astute Graphics. And honestly, I couldn't even tell you the name because I have a bunch of different stuff from there. It's the Pathscribe. They have a um, smart point remover tool. Okay. Um, this is not, it's not free and I can't really, um, they have a bunch of different like uh, bundles you can get. So like there's a lot of options of cool stuff that they have, but uh -huh. this is just a cool one because you can take it and just like scrub over points you don't need and it will delete them without messing up your paths. It doesn't really oh. matter for this, but if you have, you know, this beautiful like curved artwork that you made, but you want to take that into After Effects, this can, they have a lot of tools that help you preserve your artwork so you don't have to really worry too much about Very that. Very cool. And there is the smooth tool in Illustrator, but this seems like smooth tool to the next level. Because it, yeah, it doesn't change your shape. Super quick, and yeah. Um, I'm Very gonna do this cool. again though, just because it was, that was so snappy and easy. I got a star. Uh -huh. I love the star tool, super flex, everything is clean. Um, and then I'm going to use the handy dandy overlord tool, which I talked about yesterday. Pulse. Paul's with you on that. Um, EJ says I can be a hero just for one day, but I like to think of that it's three days, Tuesday, Wednesday, and today. And yeah. then tomorrow it'll just be normal again. <laughs> just kinda, regular. It's kind of like our Friday though. That well, is true. A little bit. Because I will be in an airport all day, all tomorrow, day tomorrow and it won't be very heroic. Um, so this is black, so you can't actually see it, but I just used Overlord to bump this into After Effects and it is there. Kapow, it's happening. And I'm just gonna change this color, just so I can see it. Um, so now I have my star. Yeah, do you guys, everybody get that? So Overlord is a is a plugin. I don't know if you're using it, like if VJ's using it or anyone joining us today. Uh, yeah, Alexander, you are right. It's... I don't know. Yeah, it will is do it? that. That is correct. Okay. That's back in Illustrator. Okay. But yes, that will do that exactly what you said. Cool. So I'm going to call this layer star. And well, I guess the first thing we can do is animate it. So, you know, it starts out as that little twinkly diamond star and then how it like busts into the um, the full five point elegant. So I'll just go down in time and I'll throw a keyframe on the path. And um, I think there are a couple different ways to do this and how I ended up doing it for the original one. So it's this diamond. But at first I was like, you know, maybe I want it to be a circle. And then it'll, you know, so it's super simple, just like a perfect circle, and then it'll like bust into the um, the star shape. So I need a circle and I, I'm gonna get one. So I go up to my like shape layer tools. Uh, you can actually double click on this. So I have ellipse selected right now. Mm -hmm. Whoop. Love it. Gotta start using that again. And then, so I'll just double click on this. And since my comp is already, it's 200 by 200, it just makes a 200 by 200 ellipse. Um, we don't need it to be that big though. We can make it like. Joel's blowing my mind. Is there a star tool, star shape in After Effects? Um, I want to say that there is. is yes. There? Oh yeah, there I we go, that would work too. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure it works exactly the same way, but it's very similar. Hmm. Yeah, because like holding down option isn't um, straightening it out. Hmm. But okay. I know that there are ways to do that. Good, and it, yeah. thank you Joel. Thanks for pointing that at us. I Out love that there's all these like multiple ways to do it too. And um, I did want to show primarily pulling it out of the, the palette thing because a lot of the time, if you're using you know pre-generated graphics, they're not going to be like a square or mm -hmm. like a star or something that's already, so it's just, you know, if this was something more complex, we would definitely be taking it from Illustrator and not necessarily rebuilding it from scratch yeah, in After exactly. Effects. Um, but yeah, if you are in After Effects and you need a star, I mean, definitely go for the star tool in there. That is it. No, yeah. And I'm really curious about kind of what you're doing here because you added the circle. Right, and um, you can't, it's hard to see because it's the same color. I'll just change it 
just for visibility. But now I have a circle in is here. Is it on, it's on a different layer? Yes, the circle is its own shape layer. And what I want to do is take the path points for that circle yes. and plug those into the path for the star. Oh, okay, uh, okay. I can guess um, how you're doing this, but let me watch. So, and when you, when you create certain shapes, like a square or a circle, an ellipse shape in After Effects, it, the path is not instantly accessible and it'll have these like size and position. What I actually want to do is like click on the ellipse path and right click and just convert it to a Bezier, Bezier path. Bezier. Uh, so that just gives me access to the path points. Like, you know, I've been messing around with those throughout these past few days. Mm -hmm. And what I'm going to do is like set a keyframe on this and just cut it like Command X, just take mm -hmm. it and paste it. Not on the keyframe that we already set on the star layer because that's saving our star path points. I'm going to go back in time and just paste it on here. And uh, there we go. It's happening. So now I can delete the original um, circle. Mm -hmm. I don't need it anymore. Um, I also noticed. Uh, so it's happening. In the options bar at the top, when you had the. Um, when you selected the circle or select any vector off to the side, didn't I see? Can you click the star? Or the I'll, vector? Make, I'll make a circle again because that's what you were. Bezier path. Oh, so yeah. Can you draw? Amazing. I wow. Didn't, I didn't ah. Let's see. Let's see how that goes. No, that didn't actually work. I think that's if you're drawing it. So I wonder if we have that checked and we like just go in here and actually just like draw it ourselves. Um, yeah, that gives us the Bezier path. So that's cool. Huh. A that's million cool, ways though. to skin yeah, a cat. No, I'm like it. The cats are getting skinned, but how is the question? <laughs> that I don't. First of all, I don't, don't like that. Don't do that to a cat. <laughs> I don't really it's care for that good, expression. Not a good expression. Um, no cats were harmed in the making of any of these. <laughs> uh, so that's cool. Now we have this, and um, but what I ended up like I um, I kind of wanted to keep the, the the sharp points, like the you know I just thought maybe that looked a little bit better. So on the keyframe here where it's still a circle, I just uh, hit G to get my pen tool, and holding down Option, like all these path points are selected. Boop. You just oh. click it, and it it'll change between curves. Does that that doesn't work in Illustrator? Um, I Does think, it? I think it, let's give it a shot. I'm sorry. To... We are just, we are learning new things. Okay. Yeah. It works on like one point. Let's yeah. see if it. Oh. I don't know if there's oh, a I'm... shortcut to make all of the curved right. points straight. I like, don't know, but it definitely go. works for one. Um, but you can't, huh. you cannot toggle back and forth either. Like if I want it to be curved again, I need to drag the handles out. It looks like. So yeah, the little differences, and this is why sometimes I prefer to just make graphics in Illustrator because I know those tools really well, mm -hmm. and um, and I, I feel like they're a little more precise. Is it go in terms of apps you know best? Is it like After Effects and then Illustrator? Second they have app? to be pretty close. Yeah, I don't I don't even know which one because I was using Illustrator before After Effects, um, and then Photoshop is like I do a lot of cell animation in Photoshop, but I don't like don't make me edit a photo. I will not be. Okay. The most it professional. Might not be pretty. I can give it a try, but it's certainly not where I feel super my most comfortable. Um, yeah. but re regardless of what you are good at or what you know, uh, we will be reviewing portfolios. So we'd love to see your work. I know how to Preferably... look at it. That's I got that. Yeah. I can keep <laughs> it. Um, but yeah, definitely not my forte. Uh, so yes, that's we have this guy blossoming into a star. Um, so uh, for our first, I guess, like foray That's awesome. into expressions, um, there's a wiggle on here. That good old wiggle that we got a, a quick glimpse at at the end of uh, yesterday's stream. And you can see that once it snaps into this like actual five point of star, it doesn't wiggle anymore. So mm. I'm gonna show you how to set up all of this. Cool. Um, so we'll get back over here. And that was on the scale, I believe. Yes. Uh, so what I like about wiggle, and we looked at it wiggling position yesterday, I think. Mm -hmm. um, let's just like recap that super quickly. Yeah, because it, it was, it was, you did it in the last off. two minutes of the stream. It was like boom, boom, boom. Yeah, it was like really fast and like so powerful. I'm like, yeah, this is awesome. And that's what, yeah, wiggle is super fun, a very quick way to add some visual interest. And you can also get pretty crazy with it once you get a little bit deeper into expressions. Um, so I have a square and let's say I just want to add some random motion. So I can open up position. This is also a good refresher on just like how you put expressions on something. Yeah. Um, so instead of uh, clicking the stopwatch here on position to make a keyframe, I'm gonna hold down option and click it. 
And then again, the these parameters go from blue to red. That's how you know there's something um, happening on there, an expression. And uh, in this little text box, I'm gonna type in wiggle. I'm gonna zoom in on this in a second. Um, and then the first number will be how many times in a second does it wiggle? So I'll put in five. And then the la the second number is the distance. Um, kind of like how far in each in the X, Y, and dire like directions will it go? So I'll put in like 500 so you can really see it. And then that's it. Well, you can see mm. it's all happening. Uh, I'm gonna zoom in this real quick so you can just see it. Wiggle, and then in parentheses, one number, comma, another number. Is, End parentheses. I, is there a place where, I mean, I'm sure there is. Woo, and this is too much, you can see. This wiggle is so intense. I'm gonna like <laughs> dial it much further down. Cause my comp is so small that 500 is like popping it completely outside of the comp. So this is what's going on now. And all of that is just because of this one little snippet of code. And um, there's a little equal sign here too. And if you click that off, it leaves the expression there. So it's still there, but it'll turn it off. It's not happening anymore. So that animation is gone. And that's a quick way to see like, how is the how expression affecting it, it? It's this little equal sign here. Oh, okay. And so that just toggles it on and off so you can, just an easy way to see like, what is this doing? Um, kind of just check it out. And what's really cool about Wiggle um, is that you can use it for a ton of different stuff. So I'm gonna get rid, I'm gonna kill this square in cold blood and I'm gonna bring the star back. And so I'm gonna put a Wiggle on the scale property because I want it to just be like, twinkling, I want it to like go up and, and I don't need it to be uniform, I just want it to be like wiggling around. So it's a super convenient use case for that. Yeah. So I'm gonna go to the scale property. Ooh, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to zoom, scale instead of position. And then I'm going to option click on the stopwatch and I'm gonna type in wiggle, five, I don't know, 50. And so now you can see it's just, it's wiggling around. And it's gonna keep wiggling because, you know, once you have that on there, it's just, it's basically always active. Um, and so I'm gonna show you how I turn it off because I don't want it to be doing that anymore when it's the five point star. I just want that to be like, just want it to come to a rest. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a cool way to do this. And maybe this is kind of an intro into um, how powerful you can get once you start like, combining certain types of expressions and controls. Um, so what you can do is you can add certain types of controls to a layer and then tie your expression to that. Um, and it makes some things a little bit easier to animate, um, kind of gives you some different possibilities. And it's very, that is very cool and it can be very powerful. So if I have the star layer highlighted um, and I go to effects and presets, or if I go up here to the effects panel, um, expression controls is what you're looking for for this. And I'm gonna grab a slider control and so this gives me a slider, which you can actually see here is like legitimately. Uh -huh. And you can animate this property. It gives you some, it gives you unlimited power. <laughs> 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 and it's pretty awesome. Um, so what I'm gonna do, uh, uh, since this is on my star layer, it'll hang out in this effects panel. And I can, I'm gonna go down to this number, yeah. 50. I uh -huh. want this to eventually be zero because I don't want it to be wiggling at all. Okay. So I can, um, with just this 50 highlighted, I can grab the little pick whip and go up to the slider. Oh. And so now, instead of it being a, a number in the expression itself, it's linking up to this, which I can set to 50. Mm. And then, so it's going. Um, very, very spicy flavor. And so now what I can do is keyframe this um, so let's, you know, we start here where it's still a diamond shape and then, you know, mm -hmm. here's the star. So I'll set a keyframe at 50 there Boop. on this slider control and then I'll go down and put in zero. And then are those keyframes in the timeline? Panel? Yes, so now if I hit you to pull up all keyframe properties, it's gonna be there. And you can add ease to it, um, you, you know, using function F9 to put easy ease. I can go into the graph editor and drag some of these boys around, or girls, some of these gals around, and 
it's just very pleasant to say boys. It's that's caught on. Yeah. That's a thing now. And um But I was you called those girls. These are so now, these, are, these ladies. are ladies. Do you see those curves? So did, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know I thought that, I but I was like, I do I say it? I, I don't, don't know. <laughs> I don't mean to offend anyone, but No, I'm right there. It's happening. It's so and the reason you tied it to the slider is because that will give you keyframes. Yes. Okay. Um that's just it's the easiest way to you know, I can just plug in the numbers on the slider, keyframe, keyframe, boom, it's happening. And so that's, you know, if we go back to the original comp, you can, you yeah. can see it happening. This should a answer uh, William Alexander's question, because this is what we're designing, is all those little sparkly stars in the background. Yes, this is like the main thing, because on this day, when Bowie passed away, the stars started to look very different, and it has not changed. Is that one of his quotes? That is, is from just... Space Oddity. Okay. You know. The ground control song. Oh, okay. Wink. I don't know why I winked at that, but you know, you all, you all know the song. If you don't, it's really good. You know, it's very haunting, um, and I highly recommend it. So, J JC, is this true? JC says otherwise the expression really isn't controllable unless you. Yes, that's like true. I mean, you can plug numbers in, um, obviously, and I am not by any. There are some expression yeah. wizards out there. Yeah. And I'm not in that tier. Um, but you can get really crazy using actual mathematics and like different stuff like loops and do, you can you can do a lot of Here's another programming question I have stuff. for you. Um, could you attach a wiggle to the opacity to make I them can. actually like twinkle? Twi yes. Twinkle? Twinkle. Twinkle. This is twinkling. It's twinkle. Make it twinkle. Yeah. Um, so if I wanted to just do it in here, like I'll hit T to pull up opacity and then I can put in wiggle. I love doing it five times a second. Why not? And yeah, um, just like do the, fifty right now. Yeah, is that so? Will it? It will never get. So basically, what that means is that it'll animate fifty in either direction. Oh, okay. Um, it'll wiggle between. So if I set the original value to fifty, I think the max it would be is a hundred. Or maybe it's only, yeah, it seems to be going. Because you don't want to, if it was 100, it would disappear. It could disappear. Well, if it was zero, it would disappear. And if, so oh. when I had this, the base value of opacity set to 100, that really just means like it's not going to go, it can't go higher. Than, you can't be more visible than 100%, yeah. right? So, so it's not. So this is basically 50% to 100%. Um, I think it's not going to go, it's not going to go very low. Yeah. That makes but sense. yeah, because like half of its wiggling is like it could go above that potentially. If I'm at 50, this means it's truly could, it could go between um, zero and 100. That's something you could just you can play around with. It's a little disco star. So if we crank this up to like amounts per second, it's like, Wah! and then you know on on the other hand, if you wanted it just one time per second, it's going to be like a pretty languid, like mm -hmm. pretty slow and chill type of wiggle. Um, and I can show you that on the scale too, just for demonstra demonstrative purposes. Like I put one on the wiggle and it's gonna, the scale is gonna be like really, real, like so slow that it like barely happens in the time that this animates. Thanks off. Zach, Zach, love it. You know a little, uh, little After Effects too. Sweet. Yeah, Zach is like the guy that I ask the expression questions to. Oh, really? <laughs> he's one of those. Um, yeah, I love it. So yeah, he he definitely 100% knows what he's talking Thank about. Thank you, Zach. We appreciate it, man. Thanks for thanks for hanging out. So again, if you whatever the value is, it'll bounce between those two, plus or minus. Yes. So this is happening. Um, now we can kind of so we'll just kind of retrace our steps a little bit. So we have the, the wiggle on the scale going and we have this like star animation going. Um, and then so we'll get back into the pre-comp. There's other stuff going on mm -hmm. in here. So some of the, the pre-comp layers themselves have some expressions on them too. It's twickling, I apologize. <laughs> Stars actually do twinkle. You know, nobody talks about that. What? They, tw they it's twinkling. Oh yeah, they That's do That's a twinkle. scientific terza <laughs> from the Latin to <laughs> sprinkle. <laughs> and it's very, it's a real thing, scientifically. It's not quite as much as a twinkle. A twinkle is just like on it's a like smaller scale. It's like barely there, yeah. yeah. So to recreate this, I will start, and I'll have another new comp. Um, let me put this in its like own little folder so I don't loo it, lose it. New you are very good about like making these little folders. And, and even then, like this is so much messier than how I normally have it. Um, Oh, are we? Oh, we're you know in what the else chat looking, uh, Yeah, it maybe look messy back there, but that's on purpose because we're gonna dive into chat and win right now. <laughs> well.
Welcome back, everyone. And yes, you can see from the, the twickles. Is that where? We're, yes, in, as you can see us. by the twickling <laughs> in the background. Yeah, that means it's time for chat and win. So say something in chat. Could be twickle, could Twirkling. be a fun face. <laughs> I just saw a fun face roll by. Just need to make sure humans at the other end of uh, that keyboard because we're going to give you uh, a free uh, gift certificate to Moo. Yeah, we have live twerkling going on. So yeah. tune in. Stars doing their thing. So we'll pick somebody at random and you will win a $30 gift card to Moo. To Moo. Yeah, get some stuff printed. Yeah, you just really, awesome. really good at these Bowie puns. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually, I'm kind of jealous. Yeah, they've been really good at it. It's been kind of fun. And yes, we do coordinate every morning. We, we Did somebody ask that? Yeah, well, Lee, <laughs> Lee just mentioned. Hey, oh, yeah, you two it are is like true. On, we're just really on the same wavelength yeah. right now. That's kind of fun. We're just channeling our energies. If the whole screen matches, so that works. You know those aesthetics. We're, you know, very on top of those. And I do want to say congratulations to Paul. Paul. Gjorn. 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 Paul Cadieu. <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations, Paul. We are going to contact you through Behance, but you're going to, you win a, um, they draw a gift card to Mew. Mew? Mew. Oh, That's gosh. the French Mew. One job. French Jeez. Canadian Mew. Um, Mew is really cool. <laughs> Mew is really good. So, enjoy. It is really good, yeah. So, we'll contact you through Behance and get that to you. I think we'll have uh, Paco will, will fl hop on a plane, fly to your house, drop it off to you. That is extremely impressive. Ring the doorbell impressive. and run away like a little, like So it's like you might as well like, not have done it. Yeah, like a little <laughs> elf. He's going to giggle and run away. That is like the most advanced ding dong ditch I've ever yeah. heard of in my life. Which everything's happening digitally, but it's not as fun that way. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> so. Sweet. Look at how, look at that seamless transition. We're back. This nice back black screen. Back to the screen. stars. Stars. Ah, ah. It's happened so quickly. Very startling. Yeah. Um. So now I got to get back into my mindset, which By was recreating this with our new star that we've made. Yeah. Because so this it, comp is like a 1920 by 1080 comp and that I just threw into the master comp. And then so inside this comp is all my little star comps. So we're going to just you, do that again. Yeah, please do. So I'm, I'll make a new comp and I'll call it stars all two. And then in here, you know, I'll go 1920 by 1080. And there we have it. And uh, so I'll drop in my first star. Very cool. Um, you'll notice, and you might have noticed this earlier, um, in my original star pre-comp, it's this like weird red color, but in this one, um, none of them are. And that's because I just used a fill because I wanted to play around and like pick and choose. There's like a blue one here, and I got some yellow ones. So I just wanted to be able to throw whatever color I wanted you on there out of the palette. You added a fill on each pre-comp? Yeah, so if I click on, you know, this random one and it's yellow and I go to the effects panel, it just okay. has a fill with that, that I dropped. Um, just because I knew I wanted some fine control over that, so it was just easier for me to pick and choose what's what. Uh, so I'll take this. No, I, I already put it in here. So we're crushing right now. And you know what? This is going to be, this is one of those situations where I'm going to refer back to my original comp for some of these expressions because I don't have them all super memorized. And sometimes, you know, you got to get it precisely right. Um, whenever I use expressions, I Google a lot, and I know I'm not the only one. Yeah. So, like, don't. You just do a copy and paste, right? Is that yeah, what you're saying? Yeah, um, some, some basic ones, you know, or um, there's a lot of really yeah. good educational stuff about expressions out there, and they are really complicated. Um, you know, especially I was very intimidated by them when I first got started. So um, definitely feel free, if, you know, if you, if you want to look up some kind of, like, cool thing to do with Wiggle or, like, random stuff, Google it, and um, you can find some simple ones that you can then start playing around with and tweaking to get you know, the particular effect that you're looking for. Um, yeah, exactly. And here's a just a link to there's a there's a bunch of resources. So a, a bunch of resources in general, but I just posted the um, uh, resources page basically yeah. for expression basics. And yeah, JC, that's a great point. Like professional programmers Google so much, and yeah. this is a this is a verifiable fact. Like there's a lot of you know don't need to reinvent the wheel and write stuff from scratch every time. Um, and expressions are the same way, and they're very powerful. Yeah. Um, so let me, let me even see what I have going on in my original comp. I know I have I have another expression on the scale for this because you can see some of them are super tiny, some of them are big, and all of these are just one comp, which is originally 200 by 200. Mm -hmm. But since I have a random expression on these, 
this one ends up being 183.7 by 183.7. And this one, let's see how big this one is, 65.7 by, so it's this random number. For um, scale, for the size? Yes. And so if I, let's say I wanna just add another one. But technically you did position that star right there. Yes, I did like not. Each... I did not do random positions, although you can do that. Yeah, but you needed um, room for the text. And which I wanted, wanted a, you right. wanted a lot of control. Exactly, I feel like you wanted a lot of control over that. Um, and so for the scale, it's fine to be random. And like if I duplicate this, because I want another star, I'll just uh, have this layer selected and hit Command D and duplicate it. It just made a super bitty little star, um, because every time I duplicate this, it's randomly generating the scale. So I'm not having to control that. I don't know what it's gonna be in advance. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice too, it's doing the same thing for rotation. So it was just like, I don't wanna hand rotate and scale these. I just wanna like, I'll get in and position them exactly for compositional reasons, but I don't need to worry about these like little details. And so mm -hmm. I didn't using this expression. Um, let's see, I am gonna pop over into this one. And first maybe let's just like throw a fill on there, um, which you will find in effects and presets panel. Um, I like prefer to do it this way because you can just type and look, but they are all also in here in this like effects window. Um, but I'm just gonna go in and type fill and here it is, boom. And then I will open up my library where I have all my swatches and I will just grab the yellow because that's very star colored. And you can see it looks a little dull because I have, uh, an, I have yeah. the expression on the opacity. I'm gonna just take that off just for visibility Sorry, because it wasn't dumb, in the original. No, I like that a lot. Um, but just so you can hopefully see it, and it's like to see mm -hmm. the color change there. So yeah. that's just a super quick, you know, I'm gonna toggle that on and off really quickly. And everything I duplicate of this will be yellow uh, instead of that pink color. Oh, there's something called seed random. Yes, and that's what I used. Um, hopefully I can show you um, why that's important. Okay, so we're going to get into our scale. I'm just like, ah, I'm gonna pull this out. I'm always double checking, triple checking, make sure I get it right. I might even like just take some of this away. So I'm putting that expression on here. Um, and now if I duplicate these, I'm getting that same effect. So awesome. So if I don't have this, let's see what happens if I do this, because I actually don't know. Nothing, that's broken. Okay. Essentially what this is doing is uh, I have set a range here between 20 and 200 because like the smallest I want it to be is 20. I want you to still be able to okay. see it. I know I had it set at zero or at one before and then it's like, you know, it's kind of a waste because then you can't even really see it. It's so tiny. And then the max is 200. And I tried, I was like, you know, maybe we have really big stars. I'll set the max to 300 and it was way too much. Okay. Um, so I just, I dialed this down and put in these, you know, these two numbers. Um, and seed random is really helpful because it, it keeps, it maintains it. Paul right now is looking at the exact website that I referenced all of this from to make sure that <laughs> I, I could I do could, it right. I could post it. I was just kind of reading <laughs> it and just to make sense of it. Because we could kind of lose mm -hmm. people here. Like you're thinking, you okay, absolutely visual can. design, motion yeah. design, and now I'm looking at code. We got into this field to avoid that stuff. Right. But then you, it, you need to you need to know how to do this. Yeah, it, it helps a lot, and that's actually why like I will continue to harp on like definitely Google it. It helps me every day when I'm working with stuff, um, or yeah, make some like really awesome and talented expression code wizards friends like um, they are invaluable. Um, what Paul just posted in the chat is a really helpful website for some like pretty intro stuff like this. Um, so yeah, essentially what I wanted. I didn't want to wiggle the scale. I didn't want it to be moving. I just wanted to set up an expression to where every time I, you know, duplicate this, it's just a different size, so I don't have to manually go in and do. Got that. it. Okay. Got it. Um, I'm trying to think of like how I can show some of this like happening. I wonder if I just take this off the seed random. Yeah. So this is a, in a lot of ways kind of doing. It looks similar to the wiggle, but without the control, because what's happening is. I have random between these two ranges, and then it's I've plugged those values into the the two scale values. So there's like x and y. Um, but the thing with the random expression is that it's random every frame, so it's still mm -hmm. taking 
the numbers from my from the range that I've set, but you can see like if I just go one frame forward, it completely changes the number. It's not like a smooth transition. Mm. It's not like slowly going from 20 to 100 or like at a rate that I can set like, you know, I every single time it's jumping all over the place. And uh Oh, sorry. Somebody's asking about not getting his questions answered. Like this chat yeah. goes by super fast, so definitely if we miss something. Yeah, we do apologize. Um, yeah, it's not intentional. If you don't, it, so JC says if you don't seed it, it uses your layer index, and if you make the multiple layer, make it multiple layers, it can mess everything up. I don't understand that. Yeah, but. I'm not 100% sure of like all the ramifications of seed random, but I know, and this is why I grabbed it out, is because mm -hmm. seed random, when I used it in this case, it keeps it, it'll pick a random number, but it just stays that way. So that's why, you know, now I don't have seed random on this and it's just like, it's changing and changing and changing. I don't want yeah, that. Yeah, you just want it to happen once. Yeah, right? I want it to pick a number and just stay mm -hmm. at that number. Um, Zach, of course, Zach's gonna come in and just like super, <laughs> yeah. Right, that's, yeah. Thank you, Zach. There's some helpful info in there. Let me just make sure I did this. So seed random, um, yeah. This is hilarious. I'm like, let me explain this to you. And I'm like, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm doing the best I can just trying to keep it up. So I'm gonna add this seed random. And I just dropped in like a random number. Um, I think I put in five, but it doesn't really, doesn't really matter to me. You know, if you change that, it will change the results. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not something you need to think about too much. And I'll set that to true, which I think, let's see what happens if we don't have that. Yeah, I th I'm pretty sure if you set this to true, that's what, um, oh, what did oh, I do? true. All right, I got it. Amazing, we're all, we're all learning right now. Oh, so here we go. That That's what true makes, the, the numbers generated by random will yeah. be the same on every Exactly, frame. okay, I was like, that is correct, yeah. I am hoping. And then yeah, true, okay. keep it the same. So yeah, Otherwise, true is like I think it's, like it's it's that it's timeless. I think is what they they okay. say, and so it's not um, it's not getting all funky. So again, if I take that off, then it's this, just this is so fun. And this little resource page that you were talking about, it's fantastic. Um, it's been there so like when I was first learning this, it's like the same page I was using. Uh, it's tried and true. And yeah, and it's like I mean pretty well written. You know, it can get really heady and totally. Some people are too smart for their own good, and it doesn't make any sense to yeah. us, like lay people. And that's like, will. I'm not a mathematical minded person. I never was, but it is such an important part of this process mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. Um, so it's like when I'm learning new expression stuff, I just take it slow, or I try to break down what other people have done. I'm not like super concerned about because it, it's very, it's still intimidating to me, but it's definitely Ooh, yeah. it's accessible. Uh, Paul Van Summer has a good question of duplicating the layer. Yes. Would both randomize? So right now, I don't think it's um, it's not like changing the previous ones because some some expressions will do that based on layer index. Um, but you can see that every time I duplicate this, it does it's choosing change. a new size. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And okay, Paul was getting at the the random seed. And that is kind of what is affecting. So if I change the random seed in any one of these additional individual layers, that'll change it. Which is actually great because like if I, you know, have a star and I really need it to be here. I need this star to be here, but it's way too big. Mm -hmm. I can open the expression on that one and just change the seed to basically anything. Did that do nothing at all? And yeah, there so eventually oh, I can yeah. hopefully dial that one in yeah. to a size that is appropriate. Um, so that is kind of cool. And then I'm gonna back all the way up to my original. And I'm gonna do the same thing to the scale. No, the rotation, I mean. Okay, so each one will um, have it. A... Yeah, which is basically, if you can look in here, it's like almost exactly the same expression. So I'm just gonna hop in here, go to rotation. I'll throw in a seed random. And I'll just pick five because for some reason, I don't really know why. And then, I don't remember, I didn't have to use any, like anything crazy in here. Um, I don't even know if I need this variable of R in here. So you can see 
I'm going to test that because I'm not 100% sure. But You're not um, really like using it anywhere, at least not right there. No. So you? in this first expression, you can see I have the seed random, and then I set a variable, which is basically, you know, it's like x equals whatever, like in math. It's basically the same principle. You're you're naming something, and then you're, you're putting a value in there so you can refer back to it quickly later. Um, so instead of having to type like random 2200 and putting it in here, um, and that can mess it up in other ways. I can just type R, and it's like referring back to that expression that I just uh, wrote. Okay. Yeah. Um, because is that, this is that per layer or yes, like it's only referring to this scale because it's on this expression. Okay. It's not a global no like variable no variable. That yeah, you're it's something you can individually set in here. And uh, the reason I did that for this one, you can see I have R R is because there's two values in the scale, and I need to account for both of them when I'm writing this, or it won't work. It'll break. Um, and AfterVex will tell you, and it's relatively helpful when you break an expression. It'll tell you like what you did wrong. You can see, okay. actually, I've done this somewhere, and it's telling me that. So I can click this little. Um, oh, yeah, there we are. What are those freaking called? The what? Um, magnifying glass. It was like the Sherlock Holmes thing, you know? <laughs> when you're like, um, if you it's have It's because you're learning thing. something new, so something old fell out of your head. Yeah. I was you like, know? what is that? <laughs> what that's is what that happens. tactile analog searching device? <laughs> um, so yeah, if you if you mess up a, an expression that doesn't work, AfterX will tell you, so you don't have to worry about figuring that out on your own. Um, so it took me to this comp because I clicked the magnifying glass, and you can click this little yellow mm -hmm. like alert thing. And sometimes no, this is nonsense mm -hmm. to me, to my mind. Yeah. I'm sure it makes perfect sense, actually, like it really does. But um, a lot of the times it can, you know, it helps you figure out, like, what did you do wrong? Sometimes it's because you misspelled something that you have to have spelled correctly. Um, sometimes you, like, left out a semicolon. It can be a lot of different things. Um, but since all I have is a seed random in here, that is not a full thought. That is, like, not a uh. full expression. So it doesn't really know what to do. And so it's just disabling it. Got it. Um, but I need to put in the random, the actual random that gets the random going. Let's see what happens. Yeah, oh, so I didn't even go. know I left in that R. That's a funny thing about expressions is like in this, I don't need that. I don't need that at all. It changed to nothing and it's still working. Yeah. So that was just kind of a, a, an artifact from when I copied and pasted it. Uh, and now you can see that the rotation of this is slightly different. And so if I duplicate this like I was, like the scale will be different and the rotation changes. And then you can just kind of like put these any old place. These are huge. <laughs> <laughs> That's something that I would probably want to go in and adjust. Um, and I kind of wonder if I did that here. Yeah, I think I went in and changed the scale. No, maybe not. I don't know. We'll look into that too. But you know, then you can grab each indi like individual layer and like I can make this pink, or I can make these orange, just like real life. Oh, you do have to do them individually, it looks like. There's ways around that too, but I mean, for, you mm -hmm. know, for such a, there's not too many layers here, so it doesn't really, we can just go in and like pick and choose, make this white. Um, yeah, good point, like in JC, like as you start to dive into expressions, everything becomes very important. Like with design, it's like, oh, kind of a tealish blue, we get it. But no, you need to have a camel case. You need to end right. with probably a semicolon or yeah. something. And if you use a colon, it's going to break. It's just little details. And that's something, again, like, you know, a lot of it is coding stuff. And you just, you you can look it up and just see what's the appropriate spelling for this, like, particular and literally, term. Like, There's the After Effects help guide that has the expressions in it. So you can just see it needs to be this exact thing. And this does this. Um, a global edition. I don't know what you I don't mean, yeah, what do you, I don't know what that's referring a to. Global expression? I don't know. But either way, I'm into it. And this is where we have Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> right. like what um that's where we have some some sparkly stuff. I think the last thing too is just the changing the timing. I think we've basically rebuilt this at this point. Um so what I'm going to do and this was a super easy thing. So you can see right now in this new comp that I built that everything is wiggling the same. The stars are all animating into stars the same. And in the original, they're all offset. They're all kind of doing their own thing. Like it doesn't turn, you know, they all pop on individually over time. They don't all turn into stars at the same time. 
Um, and that's super easy. Another thing, I'm using Rift again, which is what I was using the past couple days to offset layers and time. It's a really good way to just add some oh, texture. That's right. Um, and so I can just select all of these and there's also a randomize feature. And what that it, um, does is just kind of it randomizes where the layers are in time. Right, and, now you're um, staggering them. Yeah, so let's say I want um, to randomize these layers within like 30 frames. Mm -hmm. And so I'll type 30 into this box, Ooh. hit start. And uh, now they're kind of like popping right off. So I'll just like drag the front of these to the beginning of the timeline. So like these are always visible. And then will they? Oh, they will be a little bit different. Yeah, and that's why. I mean, there are cool. again, there are a bunch of other ways to do this. Yeah, no, but this um, way it works. Ashley, do you want me to to run through that again really quickly? Because I can definitely do that. Um, so, and just to kind of recap, like Rift, of course, is a, is a plugin. It's it's, it's a third the, party plugin. I do believe it's free. Yeah. Um, and, and all that really did is just made it so you didn't have to stagger each one out. Right. But you could just click and drag and. Have them start yeah, at it's essentially times. a fast way to to do this, where it, like you just move a little, you just pull them, so they're not happening at the same time. Um, so if you can see now, you know we start out with all of them together. If you use the randomize feature of this plugin, you can just set whatever number you want, click it, and it'll just you know skip those around. You can do it different times. It's just just a simple time saving kind of a deal. And then they all have the same wiggle, but like this just at a glance, you're not really seeing it that way. It looks like these are all kind of um, different. I like it. So that is that. Keep, just a little reminder, we're gonna have portfolio uh, reviews in about 37 minutes. And uh, yeah, so get those in. You can see the portfolio review tab right over there. Zoop. You get it. I want to know, like, and we'll maybe won't won't get this into this right now, but like how that fades in nice and smooth. Oh, that's cool. totally a designer thing. Because yeah, like, like ah, this is one of those things. Like stars. maybe an amateur would be like, like me, like just starting out would be like, just fade in the whole thing at once. Yeah. And it's not. This has that elegance that we're looking for. So. Right, Joel. Rift is name your price. Yeah, it's been. I have had it for so long, and it's just. It's for years been amazing and super um, quick way to do that. So, highly recommend. Um, so yeah, Paul was just asking me about the fading text, and I've actually done this two different ways in this, um, and they're both relatively simple. I will start out with the easiest one, which is just using a mask with a feather on it. So, I will build that. I'll just build that from scratch. Yeah, we can do uh, that. We'll probably have, uh, we'll get uh, I don't need a folder for that. But I'll start it. a new comp. Do you wanna? Yeah. Should we? You ready? Yeah, we can. Let's do this. We All have right. a surprise we're gonna, guest. We have a little surprise guest. Come on over, Julia. And I'm we'll hopefully switch over here to my screen too. To the side zone where I'm like half, ah. But don't go too far away, because I, I, I want to make sure that we get a, you know. Scoot. Yeah, no, I'm back. I'm back in. Come on, scoot on up here. Good to have you here. Scoot. Julia for having me. Tien. Am I saying your last name right? Tien. Tien. Yeah. Tien. Ah, me too. One job. Like, nice to meet you. Hi, nice yes. to meet you. I don't think anyone is uh, showing some awesome After Effects some stuff. Very cool. Stuff. Wonderful. And just so everybody knows, Julia runs the Adobe Creative Residency program, which just launched or opened the application Correct. process up to on uh, Monday. Sweet. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> yes. And as you can see, this is we could always post this in chat, but this is super exciting. That's why we wanted to kind of pull you down. And mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to say a few words about it. I do. It. Yeah, thank you so much for being willing to have me. This is an opportunity that we try to get the word out about. Um, the Adobe Creative Residency is basically a career Kickstarter that Adobe runs. It gives young creatives, um, and we use the word young in terms of young in their career. So people who have about one to five years of work experience. Um, and we really help kickstart their career by supporting them in various ways. So you, you, you know cool. you've met a lot of the residents. Yeah, um, we had Aaron Bernstein was on, a, well, this was probably, this was back, that was back in December mm -hmm. is when he was here talking a little bit about it. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and that was before uh, applica- you were, we were accepting applications, yeah. but now it's like official. Do you know how many you're going to accept for like the different regions and how that works? Uh, um, so we don't have a set number this past year. We had seven people and we're hoping to expand that a little bit. Um, what we have grown this year is um, the, the countries that we're open to. So this last year we were open to the UK, Germany, the US, Canada, and then we added Japan this year, so we are super oh, excited to super cool. Yeah, yeah, have some residents out in in uh, Japan this year. Yeah, it'd be really cool. And uh, I just encourage everybody to like check out the application process and kind of all these different questions. I don't know if you have any uh, tips or pointers because I think for some of this you might actually kind of pitch a project that yeah, you'd be interested in absolutely. doing over the course of the year. I'd love to actually talk about that a little bit. So when you do the application, most of the questions are sort of baseline like what industry are you in? You know, what's your creative passion in terms of, you know, are you a photographer, are you a graphic mm-hmm. designer, um, interaction designer? Um, mm-hmm. So that's Motion pretty design. easy to run through, you know, a lot of those. but. The, the biggest part of the application is the project proposal. And the reason why we have a project proposal as part of the application is because we're looking for people who have an idea of what they would want to do for the year. Um, sometimes we have a lot of people who ask, you know, can I just spend the year discovering myself and what I really love to do? And I would definitely say that happens as you're going through the experience of the residency. You know, you refine yourself and your, your focus. but. We really are looking for people who have an idea of exactly, you know, what they would spend their year doing. We're providing funding, a lot of travel, that kind of stuff, and so we want to make sure that we find people who really have a good sense of, if I had a year, this mm-hmm. is what I would do. Yeah, so. exactly. That gets to be pretty important. Luckily, mm-hmm. I like how there is a guide in here, just like, uh, so you could submit your best project proposal possible mm-hmm. guide. And I think it'd be interesting to look at the current residents and what they've done the past year, because obviously a year ago they were accepted, and these are their kind of like what they've been working on. That's just kind of, you know, interesting to look at to give you an idea. So yeah, precisely. feel free. We'll post this uh, in chat. And uh, so go ahead. And when is the uh, deadline for um, submissions? February 7th. So we have it open for a month. Um, Yeah, so that gives people an opportunity to really look through the guidelines that we've provided and make their best proposal for us. Into it sounds like just a a dream opportunity for most people, yeah, right? Yeah, that's fantastic. Say, totally. Like if you like you, apply you, now you, you before have, I do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're like in here, just like I'm doing it. What do you need? What who are you looking for? <laughs> that's what you have up on your machine. Now. <laughs> like as you can see, yeah. <laughs> love David Bowie, big fan. <laughs> that's my vision. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cool. It's all David Bowie for a year. But thank you so much for coming. Thank you for yeah, having me. You. I really appreciate and it. So nice to meet you. Yeah, really nice to meet you. I guess if people have further questions, is there place we can go they could go um i yeah, guess absolutely. i know there's an faq here yeah so there should be a link in there um it's adobe.com slash go slash creative residency um that takes you to the site here and we have um the link to apply as well as all the instructions on there yeah perfect and you can always reach out to any one of us um and we can hopefully answer any questions that you want absolutely. and that's about it other than okay. that we can't sway anyone's decision <laughs> this is the person you need to talk to <laughs> Yeah. You're going to get all these gift baskets now. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> like, okay, yes, right. <laughs> Well, thanks so much awesome. for hanging out. Yeah, Yay. thank you. Yeah, appreciate that's it. Super exciting. Nice to see you. Thank, thank you. you. Super fun, you know? Yeah, um, that, that is such an incredible thing. I, I, I don't know anybody personally that's been through that program, but I've seen, um, seen some of the outcomes of that, and that's like... That is super thrilling, and to have those, like, resources that you're just building, having a year that is so valuable to develop um, kind of your entire... Your project. I know how hard it is mm-hmm. to set aside and, set that time sometimes to, yeah. to be able to focus on something like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. And the thing is, is like the cool thing that she said is basically it's not necessarily about. You don't have to be. A per, we're not picking the best portfolios or anything like that. We're we're just really tapping into people that have like maybe a really good idea or a really cool project, and maybe they don't fully know where it's going to end up. But just to see someone grow over the course of the year would be would be really fun. Yeah, I think so. Super Anyways, cool. I'll post that link now. And uh, you did see motion design as one of the drop down options, so that's why we're also glad you're joining us. Dream. Because Caitlin's given us a a leg up in that perspective. Dip, we're dipping that, a toe. Yeah. At least one toe. 
possibly more into motion graphics today. I hope you dip your whole foot into motion graphics today with us. You, yeah, you totally really get it in water. there. It got a little deep with expressions, but you just saw how powerful it was. Because yeah. otherwise, you would just be animating all this stuff individually, and it take you like half a day. Right. That's what's what. so great about you know. It's like think of coding as like automation. That's what it, that's the power of expressions in a lot of cases is just saving you some time and some work. So um, even if you just want to get kind of you know, just an intro level understanding of that. Like, honestly, that can get you really far. Um, and there's a lot of great resources out there online for that. Um, now we're gonna kind of like step back to something that's just a little more straightforward. And um, it's pretty simple to throw together. Um, Good question, Voodoo Val, too. I was kind of waiting for a break to talk about that. You know what's actually really funny? And I don't wanna, yeah, I don't wanna get too far into the weeds on that, but, um, I always wanted to be like a t like a hand drawn animator, like when I was a kid. Um, I like saw Lion King when I was like four years old or whatever, and I was like, "What?" Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't know what they did because I was four, but um, that was like very formative for me, and I always wanted to do that, which is really funny because After Effects is not that obviously, and like I don't even really work a lot in 3D, which is very common now for yeah. narrative animation. Um, but it's like you know work. that was yeah that was my like north star or you know what have you. Um, there's a lot of hand drawn animation. I get really hype on uh, feature animation stuff. We were just like the first day spent like maybe a little too long talking about how good um, Spider Man into the Spider Verse yeah. is. <laughs> so if you haven't seen that, but I was um, just absolutely floored by that. So that's really what that's what gets me excited to work on stuff, even if it doesn't necessarily look exactly as awesome as that. <laughs> um, and so now we're gonna dive into this text, this text thing. And so just to run through it again really fast, but um, I wanna do the, I have faded on this top line in a different way than these two words, the different, and today at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And I wanna show you how I did those first, like like different. I know, I, I kinda wanna guess, but I guess hit me. I wanna... Hit me with your guesses. <sighs> well, the, I don't know. I'm thinking there's like some layer with a gradient on it, and then it's being masked by the text. That's and like you're pretty moving. close. Yeah, that's pretty close to what it is. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna drop in some text, and it's gonna be like twinkle, <laughs> because that's what we're doing here. We're all twinkling together, um, and I'll just like crank it up so we got like a big, juicy piece of text. I think I might make it bold. Very cool. So what I want to do is just have this like fade on in a very kind of elegant, directional way. And you can do that just using masks, which I haven't really gotten into that much, I think, the past few days. Um, but if you want to put a mask on your layer, and that's like, you know, if you have any familiarity with masks in, in other programs like Photoshop, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's cutting elements out or, or you can do the inverse. Well, um, and I love it when you've gone over this because this is, it kind of is hard to wrap my brain around it since there are different ways and maybe that's right. why. But yeah, just do what you're going to do. So I'm going to, I'll go to my Twickle layer and I'll right click, hashtag Twickle everyone. Hashtag and twickle. I'll go up to mask and I'll hit new mask and that'll just create a mask that is exactly the dimensions of whatever the layer you put it in, uh, put it on is. So, you know, it's like perfectly at the edges. Um, but what I want to do is if I hit M, that's gonna get mask path. There's a few different mask properties that will automatically oh, be yeah. generated oh, on your I layer. I know what you did now. I did. feathered it. I feathered it, baby. I know it. So I'll hit mask path, because I wanna move this, and I wanna make it bigger. So um, if I click on mask path, it's gonna grab my points, just like it would with a, with a shape layer path. Um, and then I'm going to hit command T, will kind of give me a transform box that like it, it operates on all of the points. So then I can just like drag it out and I'm making the mask bigger this way. And I just want to expand it out because mm -hmm. I'm also going to feather the edges of the mask. And I'm going to, um, sweet, yes, finally I taught JC something. He's been dropping this spicy knowledge in the chat this whole time and like. It's so nice. <laughs> yeah, right? It was like, <laughs> that feels good. I feel good about that. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna grab this mask bot. Actually, so I can show you the, what the feather does. I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna move it over here. So you can see now, anywhere that's outside of this mask, it's you can't see it. It's still there, but it's just, you know, mm -hmm. showing you what you don't see. And then I, if I hit F in here with my twinkle layer selected, it's gonna pull up the mask feather, which is right here. I remember this back in the day. We're talking in 95. Some Sorry old school, deep cut. Um, and then if I just crank this number up, 
if you look at those edges, it's starting to reveal more. And so it basically gives you, I mean, it gives you a feathered edge, which you, you can also see in other programs. And it's just adding this kind of like gradiated reveal of the, of the thing. Um, so I don't know, I think might've had it like 200, something like that. And then all you really need to do is then animate the mask itself. So if I go back to mask path and set a keyframe, well, let's like drag it here. So like the whole thing is fully revealed and I'll put a, a keyframe, ooh, a couple, a second in time. I'll go back to the beginning and move it. Maybe like off to the side a little so bit. Cool. So it's like diagonal and you just want to make sure that it's like totally gone. Um, because as you can also see, you know, the feather, it'll start revealing stuff that's outside of the actual mask boundary. So you just want to pull it far enough away so that you're not getting any residual stuff. And then maybe I'll just throw an ease on there. And ooh, twiggle. You too can twiggle. Sweet. And you and can even I'm see. I'm kind of seeing that edge. Yeah, you can see the edge. So um, some of that is just a matter of like feathering it out even more. Because you can to hopefully I mean, that's smooth just it a, out. A bezier path too. Like, yeah, you can. If you cared to. And you can change fine. the yeah. So that's like different things you can do to make it look exactly as smooth. Like it doesn't need to be a rectangle. And I can come in here and like pull out the points on the edge of this. Um, so it's more of like a curve and just whatever, you know, so that you're not drawing a lot of attention to it. Oh, that should be like there. Here, I'll do this. You might need to do that on all the points too, because when you have the mass path animating, you're, you're grabbing the path points. So see that curve didn't carry out through the whole shape. So that's, that's something that maybe you actually want to do before you animate it is to curve all the points so it's not like a smooth, um, oh, so that is, it is there a smooth go. edge. Yeah. And so that way I don't have to worry about that coming into play in like a weird way later. Twinkle. And then I'll need to adjust this again. Very cool. And to add just like a little bit of interest to that, you can see um, I have little uh, overlay and like different blending modes. So on this different layer, if it was normal, it would just be like white. And um, you can come in, this is a whole thing unto itself mm -hmm. too, but I threw up, like played with some different blending modes to give it this kind of yeah. transparent effect. Really nice. Um, if I do that in this new comp, it's not really going to look like much because I don't have a background. It'll it'll interact with the background, and since this is just like a, it's not going to look like super exciting if I put an overlay on it. Um, but let's say I like throw in a solid, and I'll make it a blue. Put that in the back, um, and the keyboard shortcut for that also is like if you hit Command and then these bracket keys okay. um, on the top right, it's going you know forward and back compared to the, so I want it to be behind the text so you can see the text. Um, and then maybe I'll go up to the twinkle and I'll go to like overlay. And so now it's Looks interacting beautiful. with that background. Um, and I did this just to just to add like a little bit more zest to it is I just, I, I dialed down the opacity and then I duplicated this mm -hmm. and I just like offset it slightly in time. So it will kind of animate on and then Ooh, it kind of gets a little gets brighter. Gets a little brighter and just like the delay. Maybe that's like a little too delayed right now, I think. Yeah. But it kind of just like makes it so it like it shines a little bit. Yeah. And I just thought that was fun. So that's something I threw in on the uh, on the original comp. You're really inspiring Ashi here. That's awesome. Hey. Um, Thanks so much. I'm so excited about that. I hope everybody just like is hyped to play around with that effect. I really love it. And it is kind of scary. Like I was really nervous of it when I first started, but the more you do this. it, um, you know, the the more your knowledge grows, you get more and more comfortable, and you can just do such awesome stuff with this. Mm -hmm. um, this and is cool. This is stuff that I would do in Photoshop, and sometimes I'll yeah. find myself duplicating layers and that have it set to overlay. So have for, ho 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 hopefully everybody saw that. If you just expand yeah, the out the, mode. the blend modes. There's a bunch of different ones, and they all do different there stuff. There are even more in here. There's some cool stuff in here. Um, in uh, in Photoshop. Dissolve is kind of a cool one because it just makes everything all crackly like that. And um, mm -hmm. that's fun for doing like neat textures. Yeah. So I just changed one of those to dissolve and so it just makes it noisy. Um, yeah. 
which can be cool depending on the look you're going for. Um, just add a little bit of like visual interest to that. So that can be fun. And then I did another piece of text a whole different way, but extremely easy uh, using text animators. And I actually just used a preset for this and I messed around with it, but te the text animators in After Effects um, can be very overwhelming, much like everything else. I don't, I don't After know. Effects. I don't. I don't know if I like them that much. Like, um, I'm, and I, I avoid them in a lot of cases, but uh, I've seen some people do some really, really interesting stuff with them. You know, like recently, they're super powerful. Uh, they're just they're very hard to kind of wrap your head around at first. Okay. But um, and this is the main way I use them is using the presets that are already in here and then just like tweaking them until I get the look that I want. Um, which I think is probably a good thing for people to get a look at. So um, I think I'll just throw that into the same comp as this. Uh, I'll leave the background on because I like it. And I'll make a new text layer and I will say, twinkle twinkle little star. Mm, I love it. Because we're on theme today. This is the new horse. Um, that sounds <laughs> super weird for a lot of people yeah, probably, I, but I the first time I was here streaming, there was a lot of horse content. So. Now we've kind of got a star vibe going um, in honor of Bowie. So here's our new text layer and we wanna just, um, I don't wanna use masks, I wanna just like fade it on, super mm -hmm. quick, simple. Um, so I'll grab my, my twinkle star layer and um, go to animation up at the top of your screen. Um, Evan is get, giving another shout out to text animators. They are they are underrated. It's. I think it's just not very intuitive to use them initially, but they are super powerful once you start. And even like I have not remotely tapped into their like full potential, but there's a lot of cool and unexpected okay. stuff you can do with them. I, I, I just think sometimes it's like with a lot of effects or something. It, it could be overused. I think yeah, that's people definitely will dive true. into After Effects and like, I want to, now that I know about this, I'm going to animate every single letter. No, don't, maybe yeah. don't do that. Yeah. I think it's just like overused. And, and type animation, designer, yeah, is like a whole thing where you, like balance is very important because yeah. you don't want to be super overwhelming. Yeah, um, I agree. But for this, this is such a simple, you know, little thing. We don't need it to be super spicy. So you can see if I go down to my recent animation presets, it's the top one. Um, but you can also go to browse presets and that'll open up. I was like, do I have bridge installed? I don't know. It's going to open up Adobe Bridge. We're gonna, what did you click? Um, animation. Of course, it's going to like it's taking over my machine. Um, Animation to browse presets, and that'll just let you. I don't want to do that. Um, there are a bunch of presets in here. You can see that I like have, have not opened this <laughs> in a while. Um, but there's this will allow you to preview them though. Yes. In Bridge. Yes. So you can kind of see what you're getting into, and you know, like I want to animate some text in. Um, this should animate and show you what it's doing, but sometimes the bridge is getting, you know, kind of, there's a lot going on Oh, I here, see the so. drop. Okay, that's kind but of you can, cool. Yeah, so these are just like all things that if you double click on this and mm -hmm. you have that text layer selected, it'll just drop it in there. So I can do that. Fade up characters is the one I want. It's right here. Got it. So I'm gonna double click on it. Boom. And it's already added? Yes, yeah, so if I hit you now, there's keyframes already added. And if I'm just like scrolling through, you can see it's just typing them on, basically. They're fading mm -hmm. on the characters like one yeah. after another. That's nice. Um, so that's like super you kept quick it and easy. Simple and I think it looks good. Um, yeah, so that's actually pretty cool. And like, I think JC mentioned this, um, is just like playing around with the, the presets that are in there can teach you a lot about how these work. And, um, you know, since they're already their preset and you can just add them super quickly, it's a pretty easy and fun way to just like get start, just like figure out what what's possible with the, the text animator. Um, and so all I wanna do is just kind of smooth this out a little bit because that's the way the other text is animating it all on. I just kind of want it to look cohesive. And what is it, um, if you did search for it in, in your effects and presets? Um, I don't, I don't know if it would, it might, let me see if it does. Oh yeah, it does. They are all in your effects and presets too. Actually, okay. yeah, I think JC Fade mentioned up. that too. But in that case, you kind of need to know what the name yes. is. Yes, but if you do have a go-to, like I, this is one I use okay. a lot because it's, you know, it's yeah. fairly straightforward. So if you know it's called Fade Up Characters, you just type that in there, boom. It's it's gonna come up, you can double click that way. So th there's more than one way to, to get into these. Um, do you know a Kyle Hamrick by chance? Yes, that's what um, I was thinking. He's doing a lot of, 
Did he did he show up? No, but Evan did Abrams someone... recommended him. Yes, he's been doing a project as we speak um, that is about using text animators. He is doing. Can we show it? Um, I don't want to. I don't even know if he has it like on a on a site or anything. I've been seeing them on Twitter, um, but he's been doing. You can do crazy stuff with text animators. Stuff that does not look like text at all. Um, so it's just something to kind of get the gears going, I guess. Um, see if we can. Yeah, that's one thing. You might want to throw wow. that up. Like that is a text animator. That's buckwa. Yeah. I have no idea. I don't even know how he's doing this. Um, highly recommend checking out his stuff though. Um, and that is just one of the super cool things that he's been doing with these every day. Inexplicable, very awesome. Um, definitely going to obsessively tweet at him about how to do all of this stuff because I, I, yeah, I don't know. Um, They're also on Instagram, cool. Well, thank you so much for the shout out. Thank you, Evan. And uh, just so everybody knows, you can easily click on um, anyone's name in chat, whether, oh, yeah. <laughs> whether you like it or not. And but, uh, <laughs> deep dive you know, into their I, stuff. Yeah, I, I'd be curious to check out JC's work and Evan Abrams and different things like that. And yeah. I think there's a lot of po awesome people here in chat. So Totally, very super cool people hanging out in there, which I very much appreciate. Um, so that was super easy. Yeah, and let's see how I can just like tweak this a little bit. Um, there are a lot of settings going on in here, but I'm pretty sure I only changed a couple of things. Zoom in on that if you want. And I will, yeah. One of the things that I, is just why it's so intimidating to get into text animators is there's a lot of options. Yeah. And um, it's not necessarily intuitive to figure out, you know, what does what and what how this is gonna work. But I wanna show the, I believe I tweaked two things. And one of them is instead of having it fade on like so, like one character, then the next, and then the I and the C and the K one by mm -hmm. one, I just kind of want to have like, I want them to flow. Overlap. I, it's kind of like putting an ease on it. Yeah. Um, and you can do that by going into the advanced settings. It's, it's going to add this animator onto your text layer. Okay. And you can go down to advanced, flip that open. Start and, in and then offset. I see offset Yes, in there. and offset, oh, is, offset is what we're going to end up animating to kind of get this to look right. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go to this shape and I'm going to change this to ramp up. Let's see. Yeah. See, that's like, that's how I want it to look. I want oh, them to be coming on. Gorgeous. And um, there's a few different options in here. It, what's great about this is this this could be multi-line text, right? Yeah. Would that work? I'm pretty sure. Do you want to crack that open and see? Huh. Oh, is that even, is that right? Um. Yeah. So it, well, yes. you can do like paragraphs and stuff. And have the, it be like, the way you showed the the animation with the mask, that that was like perfect. If it's like one thing, but this right, and this one it'll go through the whole flowing. thing. Yeah, so that is pretty cool. And then, but now you can see with these keyframes that like it starts out already being visible, which is not what I want. Um, so there is the start parameter is animated. Well, we just want to go to the offset, and that literally is like offsetting the effect that's on here, and we can just animate that. So if we start at zero, we're gonna leave the keyframes on start. We also want those, the automatically generated keyframes that are on there. But I'm gonna take offset from its default zero down to negative 100 and put a keyframe on that. And then if we go to the end of it, and we might even maybe just zero. And then now we have this like very smooth mm -hmm. kind of an text animating one with pretty pretty little effort on our part really yeah, to exactly. get that. And you could you could change this at any point because this is the thing. The way you animated it earlier, which is perfect for one word, this gets more, it's cool that this text is flexible. As right. you add more or less to it, yeah. it's going to not change the animation. And this Animation's is cool too because if I want to be like, oh, it's twinkle, you know, how silly. Yeah. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. <laughs> um, I can just change it and I don't have to worry about any of the animation or whatever. like. I don't, you know, if, I, if I'm if i animating with masks and I change the word, I might have to tweak the animation because yeah, exactly. of the mask position. Because it's going to be bigger text or shorter yeah. text or whatever. So it's cool with text animators. You can just change this text, whatever you want. Um, also cool if you're doing like graphics packages, like lower thirds, and they all need to animate on a certain way. Um, if you use text animators, all you have to do is change the name, you know, and mm -hmm. render it out again or um, add it to a, to a graphics library. Um, that Whatever. is very cool. Very Basically, cool that's stuff. changing the opacity. Remember the shortcut key for opacity? Uh, do you want me to answer that? Or do you want the chat to answer that? It's No, whoa. it's on the... Sh I was like, what right did here. you just do? That is, is cool. This is Kyle Hamrick's... Post, I don't think I've uh, seen these before. Pinned pick, or pinned uh, tweet. Kyle. See what he's doing? He um, knows what's up. <laughs> do me. Okay. 
That's like only us in this room would get that. <laughs> like, very mm, few. That's a very, very fun. certain audience. Yeah, Joel just mentioned we do not have time to get into these, unfortunately, but um, Mogurts and Master Properties. Mogurts are motion graphics templates, and I love them so much, and they're really fun. Ooh, um, that's a good point. And actually. those are maybe just something to look into. I think I talked about this on my last stream, actually, here, um, because Mogurts were really new at the time. Oh, yeah, you, you um, totally, yep. And they're super fun and very powerful. Um, and now you're being too kind, and I really uh -huh. appreciate it. Um, <laughs> But yeah, um, I know that we have the portfolio thing coming up and I'm kind of wondering like, what can we fit into the next 10, 10 minutes? minutes. Um, because I do have some particular stuff, but I, I think that might be like, th that might take more than 10 minutes. We can give it a shot. I would love just to see like a new comp with some particle, some, okay. even if you just did it super I did, simple. I there think. are particles in the background of this. Um, that's this kind of like boosh. I would have never guessed. Cloud thing. Okay. Um, I just stole that from my from the this and I just tweaked the particles. Um, so it, let's just let's pop one of those open. So this is what this actually looks like. Whoa. And that's one solid with. Uh... This is one solid with Trap Code Particular added on, and Trap Code Particular is a third party plugin. Um, and this is probably like the most expensive one that I've been using on here. A lot of them are like free or. Um, relatively inexpensive, so it's great for you know getting started and the quality of life stuff. This is pretty powerful, super worth it, amazing. Um, you can do a lot of cool stuff with this in After Effects. Uh, I don't use it a ton just in my work. There's not like a lot, of, but it's super fun to just play around with when I have like a spare minute. So I'm always excited to be able to get to do that. Yes. Um, and so yeah, I guess I can just like try and rebuild this from scratch. Maybe let's try that. I um, think that would be good. We could be adding uh, some Ziggy Stardust, as Joel says. Yeah, but that's it's just where, like because you kind of wanted a you wanted a grungy. Just you needed something more dynamic. Yeah, I wanted to be like oh, it's galaxy stuff, like you know, in the background. I don't know, just something. Yeah, it's very Jack Kirby, a little bit of that comic, comic-y style. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a solid, and I'll just call it particular. And then particular will be in your effects and presets panel. So I can just look that up. There it is. Grab it, double click. And so you basically start out with this. This will be kind of your default particle thing. It's pretty, it's like clay ready to be molded, but particles and not clay. And it's on the computer. So, um, what we want to do, um, you can use, you can do two different things. You can use um, some of these particle settings to kind of change. Right now it's a sphere. That's cool. That's what I ended up using. Um, and there's other ways where you can put in shapes. Um, so I, if I wanted these particles to all be little stars, ooh, let's do that. Wow. I'm gonna grab a star. That would blow my mind. Where can I get a star? That from? would blow my mind. Yeah, we're gonna. I'm gonna grab one out of this original thing because I know I have a star already in here. So I'm gonna copy and paste this. And um, if you want to use a shape or something to be a particle, it, it needs to be in its own comp, I believe. So I'm going to, I'm going to just take the keyframes off of this uh, and I'm going to make it pretty small, maybe even smaller. I don't know, what's a good set? 50. And then I'm going to put it in its own pre-comp and I'm going to call this like star particle. Um, and what, you know, so now it's in here, I'm going to make the comp even smaller because you're going to want um, particular wants to kind of play around with smaller stuff um, mm -hmm. because it's pretty energy intensive. So I'll just like reduce the size of this comp. And then, so in our particular comp, you actually don't wanna, you don't need this to be on. I don't need to see what we're referencing as our particle. So I'm just gonna turn it off, turn the eyeball okay. off. The fact I, that it's there is the important part. Yes, it just needs to be inside the same comp so it can, so particular can see it. Um, then Simon's asking, do you think you could do the same thing with Particle World? Honestly, I've like never really used the, um, After Effects has some particle systems in it and I haven't really played around with them very much because I just happened to get Trap Code like super early on in my youthful career. <laughs> um, I do know it's not necessarily as robust. I think Particular adds a lot of um, capability. It has a lot of options on it, but there is a lot of stuff you can do with like CC Particle World and stuff like that in After Effects. Um, so I'm gonna go Got my solid layer selected back in the effects panel. And uh, what's a couple things I played around with? First of all, I'm going to make this the star. And so I think I'm gonna do sprite in this particle type. Right now it's a sphere, so it's around. 
gonna go to Sprite, and then I'll get this texture. Mm. Um, this is one of those things where it's like there's just so much going on here. Like, it, it just I just want to show you how cool Particular can be, and it'll just be a little intro to that. Um, and so it's gonna ask you for the layer that what do you want to be the particle? And so I'm gonna grab my star particle, and then you can see. <laughs> <laughs> that it's gray now like the star was, but they're very tiny. So let's like crank up the size um, So now you can see that it's the little stars and um, if you actually another thing you can do with particle types is if I change this to textured polygon I believe it's gonna use the same The same sprite, but it's gonna give you a little more a few more options Let's see if I can good because there wasn't enough to begin with just yeah, kidding. It gets a little buck like wild. So Maybe I'll just I stick love with it, the, the it's sprite. It's so awesome. Because I want it to be just like flat facing you. Um, and so what I just did just now was crank up the velocity, which starts out at something like 100 or like 50. It's like a low number. But um, if you crank up the velocity, it'll start shooting the particles faster. Um, uh, to answer Kevin's question, you, you can use letters. Um, you can use a bunch of different stuff. It's like pretty much anything you want to plug into a comp to use as a particle You can use for this. I liked to make um, when I was first starting out I remember the first thing I used for this was to make snowflakes and I did like actual like kind of geometric snowflakes in Illustrator And I used those as particles so it wasn't oh. just like little and it's just like it's kind of fun You can do a lot of different stuff. Um, so I'm gonna crank up the velocity So now it just like it it'll increase the kind of distance that the particles are going and also the actual speed uh, but you'll notice it. that like it does slow down pretty significantly because particular can get kind of beefy, um, but it's definitely ah, it's like super fun to play around with this stuff. It's awesome. You can also do cool things like um, you can ch um, have the particle sizes be random. Yes. So instead of all being one kind of unified star shape, if I just like put this at like fifty, it's gonna randomize these like fifty. Mm -hmm. Maybe if I go to one hundred, some of them are gonna be. Oh, that didn't take. Like some will be super bitty and tiny, like right here, and then some of them are gonna be really big. Ah. Um, you can also do size over life. This is a cool thing. And so what that means is that, you know, when the particle begins, it's gonna start at the center. You can set it to be small and get bigger as it goes out, or you can set it to start big and like go really tiny. Um, and they have preset curves for this too. So like if I if I grab this preset, you mm -hmm. can see that as as the particles get to the edge, they start... they get small until they basically go away. Oh, okay. Um so that's kind of cool. Evan, I honestly don't remember. I think this is the latest version, but it's been a while since I've used it um until now, so I like I am not 100% certain. This might be the first one. I know I have the last there's like trap code 2. It's a great question. Very cool. I wonder how we can find that out maybe. This I agree, way. Iva. There are like Version so three. many, so many fun options in here. Um, and yeah, you this can get. This is really cool. I like, I like what you did today. Because <laughs> <laughs> we you. did. We started like, here's how to animate a star. Here's a bunch of random stars, and now we really have like yeah, a here, universe now we're getting, yeah. that's being created. And what's cool about this too, you know, is it's basically, it's doing it itself and you get to play around with all the little settings and like see how that affects it. Um, now I wonder if I can make this like these particles look a little more 3D. So yeah, it was at Sprite. If I make it a textured polygon, it starts, it gets a little bit more 3D so okay, you can see they're you, not facing the camera. These rotations, X, Y, and Z? Yeah, Z, um, that's, that's something you can rotate the whole particle field, yeah. like which way they're facing. Um, you see like a more, oh, that's kind of hard to see when it's doing it, but you can definitely see it's like, it's changing which way those are, are looking. Um, is there like a, I think there's like an opacity over life too. So you can do the same thing as with size over life. You can have it like fade in and out. So you can see now like some of mm -hmm. them are low opacity and then they'll scale out and also kind of fade out as you do it. And yeah, that gives it some. Some nice stuff. So yeah. actually, I can go back to the logo and show you like these streaks in the background were particular. Um, oh yeah, that's fun to play with. Oh, I think I I think I messed with that one. Um, but so this is using a particle that's in its own comp, and it's just like it, a bunch of rectangles of different lengths. And you, so you can set that up to. Um, particular can look at the comp that you have set as a particle comp and randomize which one. So if you want the particles to be a Ooh. bunch of different stuff, like I could, 
a bunch of different shapes. Yes, I could make a comp that's like a square and a circle and a triangle, and each one is just on one frame. And then in particular, you can have it look at a random time in this comp, and so all of your particles will end up being a bunch of different shapes. Yeah. So you can do a, like a ton of different stuff, um, and it's super fun, and you can get like a weird like Star Wars-y type situation going on. Um, I had a bunch of different particular things in here when I was just playing around. Ooh, that's fun. I like so, the Joel, that's a good recommendation. Use the Bowie icons as particles. Yeah, and that was that's the, a, the yeah. star that I had thrown in there. Um, and I almost used that in the final and I just like ultimately decided I wanted to be more subtle in the background than that. Um, but it's pretty cool. Of course, now I've like, I've turned it off. So let's bring it back. And there's my original. So we're back in business. Um, is it is it that time? Is it portfolio time, or are we? It is getting there. So if you submitted a portfolio, actually no, just everybody stay right where you are. Don't move <laughs> a muscle. <laughs> this is amazing. I love I love how this is all working out. I love that you we were able to dissect all of this today. Yeah, that was I, everything I'm glad we got down, to it. Just to point out the texture in the background, which I thought you just imported a a JPEG and stretched it. Nah, baby, you can get <laughs> crazy with it. I will say, like you to make the crazy. moon, it's I used Adobe Stock and I got a picture okay. of the moon and I just dropped it in here and I used a blend mode. I to, love it, like a little pink. Yeah, yeah, so it's basically it's this. I'm just grabbing it and mm -hmm. um and then there's just like a moon photo texture on it. Um, and that's it. And you just like knock this out, just like, well, between I, today and last night. Or yeah, today. it was this morning. This I did morning. all this. Um, you make me sick. No, I'm just Chris, that's what I was thinking. I was like, um, there, there's, I can think of a really good way to do the, the plaid <laughs> tunnel. I might give that a try next time. Oh, plaid. Contact me. Um, have you ever seen the classic film Spaceballs? Yeah, it's been a while. It's really good. My dad is a big fan of that movie. So That is awesome. Well, I think these graphics are perfect. You did stars. We have a whole universe. I think it's time we might as well dive into portfolio reviews now. So let's just go ahead and I'm ready. launch into space right now, folks. Whoa, we're back in space. Can you, can you breathe? Uh, can you breathe? No, wait. No, Caitlin. it's fine. This it has an Earth-like atmosphere. In my I'm really feeling like Flight of the Concords right now, actually, though. I'm yeah, like, it you, is kind of very We're fine. in space. We're in space, guys, because that's how awesome some of these portfolios are. We got to look at them from space. In fact, they're up here. <laughs> Pulling it up full screen. Taking off the helmet. I'm leaving it. Is that okay? Can you all you, hear me? You can leave it. <laughs> it's too it's heavy. So hard. <laughs> but I did want to welcome Flow Toots. Ooh. Or Tuts, however you want to say it. But here seen, we have. Seen you hanging in the chat? Yes. How appropriate. We see you there. Happy <laughs> to have you here. Peep you right now, laughing. <laughs> we could totally be friends, Voodoo Dom. Oh, T yeah. Tweet me. Or at Perfect. some other Voodoo way. Miles, she's way cool. <laughs> she seems awesome. Yeah, she's like amazing. That's just such so talented. It's awesome. She's so fun to hang out with. You gotta meet her. We're uh, get, so flow toots. I'm already impressed with like this text. How did you do that? I don't know. I'm totally curious. But motion designer and illustrator from Paris, France, has a, a link here. We'll scroll down just kind of get a, a vibe for where they're at in their career. Uh, professional creative motion designer and illustrator with more than eight years of experience. Wow. Motion graphic instructor. That's cool. Love working it. for creative motion while well, working for yourself. So awesome. Very cool. And there might be a more out on dribble, by the way, but we'll review these yeah. these three and we'll guess we'll just go in order. And how appropriate the spaced challenge. Amazing. Spaced is a space travel company providing ultimate experience in outer space travel, which is cool. Using Illustrator, Photoshop, After Effects. Nice. I like, thank that's you for filling That's my steez as well. Yeah. Those are, that's the dream team of uh, my, my Adobe Files uh, programs that I really love. 
Um, yeah. So this is sounding pretty cool. Let's get into it. I love the process. Yes. I am such a huge proponent of including process stuff. And that was that was pretty cool to see. Even just that, like, people really like to see the process. Jason, you know I'm keeping this helmet on the entire time. This is my <laughs> this is my personal helmet that I brought. Yeah. From brought Troy, from, New York. Yeah. No, it's and she not. wore it all the way on the plane and everything. I did. People were very put off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They, they were not like, do you, know, do you know something we don't? That's what they were thinking. <laughs> like safety first, everyone. <laughs> uh, this is, I think, like my favorite like little screen right here. Yeah, this is I think is there's very so cool. many good qualities. I Super like fun. this a lot. It's such an interesting idea. I mean, um, because the concept is very strong as well. Uh, you know, I remember doing some more projects just for my portfolio. And, you know, a lot of it is like, rebranding a grocery store and stuff like that. And I mm -hmm. like this. It feels very visionary to me. Yeah. And um, like also very real. And don't you think, again, uh, he or she does motion graphics. I could easily see this moving. Absolutely. Like you could see some you yeah. know, depth to it. And let's, and here let's we go. see it move. Let's dive in. Um, I don't, actually, we'll just hit play. We won't, there might be audio, but. This yeah. is fantastic. That that feels like a very real um like intro like website as you you know you you go to space to dot com and then like all of this is like flying in. Mm-hmm. Um Oh, look at that logo. Watch the logo coming. Zip. Very nice. Very nice. I like this a lot. Actually one Into only it. only presentation note I would have on that is um and I've done this myself, is you might want to just like have it loop a few times. So if somebody's yeah. watching it, they can just hit play once and then just like let it keep running over and over again. Um, cause it definitely invites you to keep looking. Um, this is something that has like enough nice subtle movement, um, that you kind of just want to keep like taking it in. I know that it looks like there's different colors of these. Cool. Yeah. Which is nice. I'm honest. You might string those all into like one video file and, um, somebody can just like run through them. Yeah. And I mean, it, it, you know, if we, uh, the question, next question is like, does it, do, do you, I don't think the color, I don't know if it adds that much to it. Like, I love this first one. That's yeah. all I'm saying. I think this first one's so good. I do. I agree that it's that... very strong. And, like, the black, that's very evocative of space, you know? Yeah. That's a very, and it has such a classic feel. I love that there are, like, no little star elements. Yeah. It's just, like, very, very emphasizing. Clean. There's just the one, like, the circle. And I, I, it, it's really nice. Um, and the black and white oh, just makes God. it feel very clean. Yeah, exactly. And notice how it's not even a true black. It's it's a dark gray, right. which I'm totally into. Yeah. So I I would I would say I was kind of less impressed with these for like who am I but you know like I'm less impressed with these some of these color things so aren't really needed. That's like that's yeah I think I'm that saying. would make sense you know if there were other elements in the project that were like this is our brand color and then maybe as a unified thing mm -hmm. but just on its own I think the black and white looks the strongest. Yeah yeah exactly. I love this because I did a project super similar to this. This um, looks I think like when your I was still style. In school, almost. Yeah it was really um, just like similar idea. Um, so this is, this is super cool to see. Uh, I love it. Looping. Yeah, this is off to a great start. This is cool. Oh wait, go oh, back. Yeah. Sorry, it was animating. That's all very fun. And this texture is like fantastic in there. Yeah, I really like this. You know? Very minimalist. I like that the bird was blinking. This this alone, just as a graphic, is absolutely right. Beautiful. The design on this is so strong. This is like I love the combination of graphic designers and doing motion design. They're so powerful together. Yes. Forever wrapping. I guess this isn't really directed to you, Flowtoots, because you're crushing this. No, I love this one. Um, oh, he hates. But yeah, if you know, if you're a graphic it. design background, like adding motion design can be so so powerful for you. Um, highly recommend if you haven't done it. We like it, so that's I had to jump in there and appreciate it. Now we can go back. <laughs> like. <laughs> All right, here we have Motions Graphics Master Class. Oh, very cool. After Effects. Okay, a master class. Are and we ready for this, this? This is just cool stuff, guys, that you can see online wow. and you can freaking learn from the greats. That eyeball's fun. I that, love that pencil. The pencil, that is... exactly. This is very cool. Zoop, zoop, zoop. And this zoop. is a great showcase for, you know, and if you're um, pitching, like, you know, take my course to, to learn the things that I know, it's very cool to see all these things. Um, and kind of seeing like a diversity of things that you can do in After Effects. 
Um, also, I love that that's like a brand. So mm -hmm. uh, that's a recognizable brand. That's like another good way to to kind of show the cool stuff that you get to work on. Mm-hmm. And this is really fun. Zoop. Yeah, I do and agree with eyeball. Voodoo Val's feedback just then. Um, thanks, Claude. I'm feeling very spacey at the moment. Uh, but Voodoo Val was saying that uh, having one sheet with the still images and then you can scroll through a list of the animated ones so it's not mm -hmm. sprinkled throughout. I, I think that's good just to keep things organized. Yeah, I think so too because I kind of like these images are strong on their own. I'm just like holding this on. I mean, it's not about to go anywhere, but I'm like. <laughs> <sighs> hey, that's a, real, that's a real helmet. It's having it's a Buzz Lightyear kind of a thing. like space metal. I am a that. space ranger. You are a space ranger. <laughs> So, yeah, that it. is some fantastic work. Um, nice, I guess, nice curated portfolio. Um, I almost want to, like, see more, in fact. Let's, again, pop, let's hop up into let's that just, drip. Let's drip it. Yeah, I knew it. I knew there was, like, more amazing stuff. So I would just say, like, you know, oops. Well, let's that you not must worry about sign that. In I got to sign it? in first. Yeah. This is cool. This is actually what I like dribble for. I don't know. I think maybe it had different utilities. Um, a while back, um, but really I like to put work in progress stuff on there and just things that I like and I I consider it maybe a quick site I can show people to be like, this is a bunch of the stuff that I can do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think that's a good utility for Dribbler. Like here's just a bunch of little snapshots of all the cool stuff that I like or can do. I put personal projects on there a lot too because um, that's just like an easy way to get those out there. Yeah. So I think that's a strong use of, of Dribble. Yeah. Exactly, and uh, I would. What I would actually do is I would. I would take all those animations. I would load it into Behance, and then I would make a uh, an Adobe portfolio out of it, which is just saying, let's pick these projects. Oh my God! Actually, do you want to like throw up my website because that is Adobe portfolio. Oh yes. And I love it. It's so easy. So. So all of these are just Behance projects that I use Adobe Portfolio it just kind of like aggregates them into a site and you can make it look very clean and nice and organized. And anytime I do a new project, I put it up on Behance and then I can just like automatically, it, it just to my website. Yeah. And um, like the format is consistent throughout. And um, I just, I like this kind of website format to help you, um, it's just clean, you mm -hmm. know? And, and you, you just, you publish it, you have to, you leave it alone. Yeah. You could maybe update oh, you can Behance do, If you go to the done. sketchbooks tab at the top, like those are not Behance projects, but, or maybe they are, I can't remember. But like the point being, these are not like animation projects. So I could have that on there because I like to draw and do illustration. I just, I don't oh, know. Oh, that's it's fun. So great. Um, I like so that you call it sketchbooks. Like yeah. this has a, you wouldn't load this into with all your other stuff, separate category. Right. And Perfect. it's, you know, it's just to showcase that like I do a lot of my illustration as well. Mm -hmm. um, and all those are are just pages full of scans from my sketchbooks. Like if yeah. you click through one, it's just like, just it's just images. And like, you can do a lot of stuff with it. It's very powerful. Um, yeah, and so and, I, and I love it a lot. Instead of using like WordPress or something like that, it just kind of takes a little bit more thought for me. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, and Flowtoots here is a very strong designer, so I could easily see, you know, graphic design, yeah. motion design Yeah, tabs. like you can just partition these, and yeah. it just helps um, helps people try to, you know, get to what they want to see faster mm -hmm. on your website, stuff like that. Yeah, and so Flowtoots, if you go to your portfolio, if you go into projects, it should there should be a banner right here up at the top that says, you know, turn it into an Adobe portfolio, so. Yeah. Super, super easy quick, do, super easy. And then customize the URL, you're good to go. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Uh, next one we have Paul. Paul Van Summeren. I hope Paul's here. I think he was earlier. Yeah, I think I saw yesterday. Paul hanging out in the chat earlier. Um, First of all, you misspelled hey. Just <laughs> kidding. I love this font. I, I was just about to say, good. like, that font right. is very striking. <laughs> I love the pink, too. Mm -hmm. I love that, like, bold one color choice, like that's very, I really like I that. Feel like it that's looks very clean. Pretty hot these days. I think it was. A tasty pink. There was a dust, I, I, I don't know. Millennial pink was hot for a while. It was. This year yeah. it's like a salmon. I can't remember the name. It's a, oh, it's living coral. Living coral. Yeah, but kind of like in <laughs> that same. Yeah. Yeah. Pink, let's it. keep these bright, shiny. Let's dive into motion Ooh, love that design. slack. Yeah. 
Oh, this is cool. Tribute to man versus machine and slack. All right, let's dive into this. So this is something I would say that like, you contributed to this, um, but not necessarily animated like the whole mm -hmm. thing yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Up. Yeah, super fun. Um, do you have, let's, I want to scroll down on that site and see like which one. Let me stop this oh, one. That is cool. Is it this one? Okay, so I decided my own submission with an extended piece, adding some detail shots. That's fun. Oh, I love that shallow depth of field. Love it. Yeah, I love that a lot. So good. I really like this. Um, I, only, I have one thought about it, and um, I, the only thing I think is that you should put yours on the top and the, the compilation on the bottom, because mm -hmm. um, people do, I don't know if you noticed that we definitely did this, but people will skim on the type a lot of the time, and so. Yeah, just like um, I did. Yeah, I, I, I love this, and I think stuff like this is really important to include because it shows, yeah, yeah but being the project lead and, mm -hmm. like, doing collaborations, like, that is huge. I love to see that in a portfolio. I think that's, you know, it shows your involvement. It shows mm -hmm. that you were able to, like, guide this from start to finish, which is so pretty good. difficult to wrangle people. Yeah. Um, especially on motion graphic stuff where it's, like, it's a big lift. Mm -hmm. um, just putting yours at the top, I think, would be, like, boom, so I can see, like, your specific thing. Um, it's pretty minor. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I agree. But yeah, but that was very cool to see. Very cool. And I like this. I do. That's, you, ever, yeah. you, you might recognize Paul out on the street because he's actually just made <laughs> of donuts. Full of little donuts. That's I a good way to get lot. super popular is to be constructed, fashioned completely from wee donuts. <laughs> oh, this is very cool as well. That's a fun little build animation right there. Welcome in the Bibliothek. Let's kind of jump ahead to like okay, so some of this like 3D. Very cool. Zoop. Nice colors. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Obviously, uh, isometric perspective into it. Oh, I love that. I just love all this. This is not easy stuff. We're talking C4D, I think. No. I love yeah. Cinema 4D, but like this is definitely above my pay grade at this moment in time. This is very slick. I love this mm -hmm. like architectural yep, those visualization. Are fun. This is really cool. Um can we back out and look at the I just want to know if there's any like process stuff on the the pay. I'm always looking for that. Yeah, so I'll look at it. Responsible. Is it like scrolled down? Oh. And just yeah, that's it. That's the only thing too. Yeah, like I would love seeing like um maybe just some like gifs in there too of uh the animated sections and stuff like that like on its own so you can just like watch them looping or something like that. Um, I do that sometimes where I'll put stills that I like of the video on the video page just so people can kind of see, you know, or if they're just like scrolling through really quickly before they start watching the video, they can get kind of like a, a taste of what's in there. Um, Plus, you can double dip and you can like post those elsewhere as to like on your um, Instagram or whatever. So it just kind of helps. Like I always make, I have like a social folder in all of my After Effects projects where I'll then just like render out bits and pieces um, as I go or like when it's over. So I can put those on Dribble or put them on Instagram. Um, just like things that I can kick out like quick renders of to share. Yeah, it'd be good. So this is 36 days of cool. type. Um, it's just taking a second for them to load. These are probably like looping gifts, but certainly fantastic. Uh, made with uh, MoGraph loops, Cinema 4D, After Effects, obviously. Super fun. Yeah, this is really nice, because all of these are executed to like a very slick level. Um, mm -hmm. And I also love stuff like this because it kind of shows your follow through and let, like, you know, you, you set yourself a goal and then you do it. I would have gotten to like B, <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, I'm sure all of us, like <laughs> so many creative people I know, definitely including that. myself will like start enough. And you know, everybody's got a million unfinished 
things, but like with how these are so nice and look like that having Jay. that full set, that's pretty cool. Oh, look. So fun. Very cool. Yeah, these are awesome. Like, yeah, I, I, I like seeing these sets of like three, you right. know, kind of trying out something, uh, you know, going on to the next set. Yeah, that is very smart. So it gives you more than just like the one day to play around with a new style and you can kind of build on it as you go, but then move on to like a new thing. Um, wow. That Z, I am really feeling that. Yeah, I'm thoroughly impressed. Love the texture. Again, like you can build a career just on this being your style. Yeah. Sort of thing, you know, but like look at how it just shows this flexibility and creativity with a lot of these. Yeah, and it's cool to see, you know, obviously like the through line is like the, the mostly like cinema 4D stuff, but it's also different and not just in this project, although that's mm -hmm. a good example of it, but like you are able to do a lot of different styles. Um, it looks yeah. really good. Paul, you are a master, super impressed, great with motion design and graphic design and the fact that you're doing you know, this 3D is really impressive. So yeah, yeah. crushing. I'm kind of slowing down. It's we only have less than oh, five minutes. Oh no, we're at the minutes. ten minute. Oh yeah, for the yeah. But anyways, check out uh, Paul's portfolio. Uh, any last words about uh, his <laughs> portfolio in um, general? Yeah, I think it's great. I think just like the order. It's like any comments I had were like super minor. Just about you know maybe you can add a little bit of behind the scenes stuff or um mm -hmm. yeah and then anytime little, little stuff yeah it seems like you did i think you identified what you did and didn't do and stuff like that and like oh just say everything you did because it's really impressive you edited that video um yeah it's always know. good to throw in that like a little bit of like i'm awesome and i did all this and i really like i like this little welcome paragraph right here keep it simple um, yeah. Say what you want, like what you see, hit me up, you know, non-committal, like hit me up message, super cool. Yeah, the about section is like kind of tough, but uh, you know, sometimes I've seen ones that are super long and it's just like, nobody's really gonna sit there and read through it because people are usually like rushing, you know, and if they're looking at your site, they probably just, they wanna see your work, see if you're a good fit, like review your stuff. Um, and to just keep it simple, I think, and also use your about me page to again be like, and contact me if you, you know, are interested in working together, like, um, you just want to keep it simple. Mm -hmm. Into it. So, uh, Paul, if you could, I don't know if your name's in here. I know you're joining us, but basically check out his more work on Behance, it looks like, as well. So, Sweet. super cool. So awesome. Paul, you are the man. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to uh, actually both people. We could switch. I want to switch back to your screen, too. Let's do that right now. Boop. I got that same old stuff on here. Thank you to Flow Flow Toots or Tuts. I don't know how you say that. I don't know. Yeah, I think it varies. Personal preference. Yeah, but really strong stuff, and I'm super impressed. Should I bump up out of this? Ralph complimented me generously on keeping the helmet on for so long, and it's like this is I my commitment. Hello, employers. I know. I, I am a very bad. committed. You are. <laughs> this is on my resume. Actually, has worn the space I'm helmet for quite to put a long mine time. On too. Well, I was like just working up to taking mine. Oh, this is good. Oh, wait. Ground control, please advise. Um, All right. Victoria says, don't go away. We love you. Uh, I agree. You thank are you, everyone. Fantastic. Thank you so much for coming out and watching. Um, I hope this helped. Feel free to reach out to me on social media or like send me an email, get in my contact form, whatever. Yes. Um, I love to talk about this stuff. I love to get people interested in using After Effects. So if you have any questions, I don't know, tweet at me. And do you, you belong, so do you, are you still on a, some Slack uh, yes. motion graphics groups? Um, less so now because like in the past year, I decided that I was too online. And oh. So I'm, I'm less on it, but there is there are some good motion slacks out there. And one of the main ones you can join, I believe it's like motionslack.com is the URL. Um, and you do have to submit some work. Um, which the admins will look at because uh, it's a, like an invite process. It's very large at this point. Um, so it, it might even, some people like, you know, slip through the cracks, you know, but if got you got it. like a, a reel or whatever, throw in there. Um, I do believe, yeah, again, it's motionslack.com. Um, a lot of cool people on there and it's a pretty fantastic resource. Twitter is the same. Um, there's not like a good place to point you specifically, but there's a really robust uh, motion graphics community on Twitter that 
Uh, my experience has been super positive. A lot of assets, people are super helpful, willing to help. Um, and like, I would not be where I was today without Twitter at the time. Um, uh, Slack was not so much a thing when I was first starting out, but the community on Twitter, um, freaking, I, you know, I, I'm very much self-taught. And so I owe a lot to them. Should I? I thought you were just going to pop it off. I was no, like, I just try to straighten it. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's time to emerge. <laughs> it's stuck. Shh. No, it's not stuck. Oh, uh, well, I think you've been wonderful. You can find uh, Caitlin. Caitlin. It's actually Kate Ke Kaju. Kate Kaju. Dot, dot com. Kate Kaju dot com. You can find all of our social media links out there. And I, I just appreciate you. It's fun seeing all your like friends show up too in chat, by the way. I, like, and I cannot thank y'all enough for coming out and watching this and also helping me out, um, dropping hot knowledge in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, super nice. Yeah, you've been amazing. And you'll, you'll come back and see us sometime? Anytime, y'all. Okay. These are so fun. I hope that it's helped. Um, yeah, and again, if you ever need any help, hit me up. Awesome. Well, you've been wonderful. Thank you, Flo Toots and uh, Paul Van Summeren for letting us review your portfolios. Uh, we might not have gotten to yours. Uh, and nonetheless, we do this every week. So next week uh, is all about UX and UI, just so everybody knows. Kick it off on Tuesday. Join me on Monday with Getting Started. Ooh, cool. Speaking of XD, tomorrow uh, Talon will be uh, going live as well as he does every Friday. But we'll go through Caitlin, Caitlin withdrawals here in a second. I think we're all kind of feeling it. Like, no, it's been a fun <laughs> week. Again, bringing out the big guns for uh, Creative Campaign Week, as we call it. And hopefully you enjoyed this. Thank you, Caitlin. Yeah, thank you so much fantastic. for having me. It's awesome. Thank you, Wendy, Leo, JC, Juan, Dave, Eric, Victoria. You're awesome. Thanks so much, everyone. See you later. <laughs>